Meeting is reconvened. Thank you for allowing us to do that short little recess. All right, with that, I'm going to start off with uh, asking if the council has any questions of Administrator Chansky about the presentation on our budget that he's made. Okay. I agree. Thank you. Well yep. done. <laughs> yeah, I just yep. want to say excellent job. Right. You did, you did a great job putting the budget together. We, as a finance committee, worked real well. I think there were some great creative solutions that we came up with to get us where we needed to go and still show a decrease in the levy, which I think is important for our, our citizens here uh, within the city. So I'm very happy with where we stand at it right now. So hearing no other questions from the council, all right. What we are now going to do is we're going to open up the public hearing on uh, the 2023 budget. Again, as I, you heard me state earlier, I asked if you're going to come uh, forward and um, present to the council, you state your name and your address and you come forward. Limit your comments to three minutes, please. Uh, and then again, let's try to avoid redundant comments and uh, unless you have something new to add. So with that, I will now open the public hearing on the uh, proposed 2023 budget and levy. Is there anybody here that wishes to address the council? I will ask again, is there anybody here that wishes to address the council? Good evening, Brad Scott, 8520 Sunny Lane. Um, I can appreciate the importance of the decision that's in front of the council tonight. Uh, setting a property tax levy is um, a pretty significant undertaking in any operational year. The thing that I think probably deserves a little bit more recognition, um, which I'm guessing that most of you on the council understand, is the property tax burden is a direct reflection of the level of spending that's going on in the city. And when I think about what's proposed tonight for the levy and have yet to get to other budget items, like committing additional money for City Hall study, for Bushman Road study. Um, it's concerning, in part, as someone who's coming on to the council the start of next year, to think that we're going to be essentially tied to these financial commitments the council's considering making tonight. So part of what I would request is for the council to seriously consider of a proposed levy of 2.9 million, how much more of that can be reduced by thinking about the timing of some of these additional financial commitments. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anybody else that wishes to address the council in this public hearing? Hearing none. Public hearing for consideration of the 2022-2023 budget and levy is now closed. So with that, the next step is for the council to consider adopting the budget as presented. Again, I'm going to ask the council at this time, is there any, is there any clarifications, any questions they may have of Administrator Chansky before we go forward with that process? No? Hearing none? All right, hearing none, I will then call the question. Do I have a motion to approve the adoption of and adopting the 2023 budget and levy as presented? So moved. I have a motion from Council Member Bakken. Do I have a second? Second from Council Member Lillehei. Again, one more time. Any further discussion? I'll further discuss as it was brought up in the uh, um, public hearing uh, regarding Bushman Road City and City Hall study. Uh, the Bushman Road study has been on the agenda for quite some time that we need to look at, we need to address. Uh, this is not committing us to redoing that, but it needs to go to the next stage of doing that uh, design phase. Uh, by no means are we saying we're going to be doing it. We've re drastically reduced it from the potential of doing a county road study, I'm sorry, county road design standards, and we've reduced it drastically due to public input back down to local road standards. Um, so that's just, these are things that have been in motion for quite some time. No, and I guess 
I want to speak to the Bushman Road because I know it's one that's out there. It's been there for a long time. But I'm a believer in public safety. Public safety is roads. And I think it's really important if we think about Breezy Point and we look at the roads that we drive on every day, what do we want? And I understand that it's a cost. They don't get any cheaper. They always get more expensive. Doesn't matter when you do them. Whether you do it now or you kick that can down the road, it's still going to cost money. I potentially could see the city having to issue some debt when it comes to actually building the road. That's just the way it is. Road projects are of such as that. We tried our best to get other cities and townships to get involved to see if we could do the whole piece and do it the way it needed to be done all the way through. Unfortunately, those entities to determine they did not want to be a part of that. So we're now left trying to do something with the piece that we see and that we own within the city of Breezy Point. And there are plenty of people that I know have come forward and said something needs to be done with that road. It's a hazard. And if any of you have driven it, which I believe most of you may be sitting in this room at one time or another have, you know that it's not getting any better. And the city can only do so much patching to a road. And that point has been probably surpassed already with that road. Um, so trying to build a road that's going to withstand what goes on that road which we know that Anderson Brothers and other aggregate companies, it's not just them, but other aggregate companies as well, are using that road, and they use it a lot. And so we feel that it's important as a city to think about that. So I just want to point that out because it's a challenge. Does it cost money? It does. Every step of the way, none of it comes easy. And so this big piece that we've got moving forward now that we're going to look at isn't even the building phase but it is the cost of doing business in order to get something like that accomplished. So uh, I echo that. I think the road committee has done an outstanding job working on that, putting it forward, doing their due diligence. And, and I think we have to consider that as a part of the process as we go forward. And I know that's just one small piece of the overall thing, but it is a big piece. So just my comments on that alone. Councilmember Bach. I would echo uh, what the mayor said. I've been here a long time and I intend to be here a lot longer, sitting right out there where you folks are. I know exactly the last 25 years when we conducted meetings in a tin can out there at a field. This city is growing, believe it. The numbers show it. That costs money. The seventh police officer, I fought for the last two years to get a seventh officer here. And by God, we're going to get one. And we need that. <coughs> this is not a lecture. I speak from experience. Three planning commissions, three councils. A long time. I don't envy the 23 council. But make no mistake about it, you better prepare, just like the mayor said, down the road, we're going to have to bond. This city is growing, the fastest city growing in the county. End of my sermon. Make no mistake. I also am available to any of you you call me anytime and rely on my experience here. Bushman Road, I've heard it from the second planning commission I joined. It's a disaster and it's dangerous and it's going to be fixed somehow. I took too much of the time, I'm sorry. Any other comments from the council in the discussion? Just one thing I'd like to highlight is the fact that we are debt free yeah. of all the cities around here. This, of it. this is something that um, is a real feather in our cap. And we can talk about cutting the budget, cutting the budget, cutting the budget. You know, we can do it bringing it down and down and down. But then when something comes up, like the Bushman Project um, or something else that's uh, unplanned, then we have to bond for it. And then we start spending a lot of money in debt service. Now, in this case, we got a quarter of a million dollars 
in debt service that we had been paying, next year it's going to be zero. And we take that money and we move it into capital projects so that when a new capital project comes up, maybe that's unplanned, we have the money to mitigate that. Um, and that is a very, very important asset of physical planning. It, it doesn't take a whole lot of brains to keep cutting budgets. <laughs> but when you start having to borrow money to do business, you are really moving yourself down the, the primrose path. Um, so that is something to keep in mind in the future, and you know, especially for the new administration coming in. Cutting budget year after year is not going to work. You need to maintain that budget. You need to keep up with inflation. You need to keep up with the expenses. You need to be looking ahead 10 years. If a, you know that the project, for example, the sewer coming in, we're raising it $5 a quarter. I mean, right now we're about half the uh, sewer cost of our uh, adjacent neighbors, okay? But we have a good enterprise fund right now. Um, but when we actually have to do the expansion, it's going to be very expensive. And to soften that blow, let's start adding a little bit every year so that we have enough capital in our sewer enterprise fund to be able to pay for it without having to take in debt. Because having being debt free is a huge, huge plus for us. Thank you. Yep. Anything else? Do you want to add your No, comments? I don't have. No, I don't have. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing left. No, I think everything's been said. Good. Yeah, no, I echo everything that's been stated and said, and it's it's a challenge. I won't say it's not. Um, I guess I, 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 maybe this is getting it really down to a base level, but I kind of chuckle sometimes because when I think about a lot of this, I think about some simplistic things. Kind of like when you buy a car, it's brand new. And then <laughs> as you go down the road and you get a few miles on it, you got to maintain it, right? You got to change the oil, you got to put new tires in, you got to put new brakes in, you got to do that. But if you don't do that <clears throat> and you just keep driving it, eventually the tires blow out, the brakes go bad, the car crashes, the motor blows up and you got to get a new car and then it costs you a lot more money because you haven't finished paying for the first one you bought. So I know that's a really simple way to put it, but the idea is in the same concept as we look at our roads, as we look at our infrastructure, it is like a house. It is like a, a car. You have to take care of it. You have to maintain it. And I can tell you that in my experience outside of my work in council and my real job that I do every day, I've worked with several organizations that have made the same mistake that I sometimes see a lot of entities make. You build something and then you forget about it. And you think it's going to last forever like the city hall, like the police department. And all of a sudden, you're 20 years down the road and the place is falling apart because no money has been set aside or there's been no thought made about what we do in the future. And this is the same concept. So it's a lot of those same type of things. The roads are no different. So it's, it's a challenge. It's not easy. It's a balancing act. I think we tried to do the best that we could this year. Uh, I feel good that we were able to reduce the levy from 10% to 7%. I think that says something right there. I think you look at our tax rate, it has gone down expansively comparable to what it was. And again, that's because of what is going on with our values, but it's also because, as I heard Councilmember Bakken say, we're growing. Days of a little city of Breezy Point are long gone. So I don't see that changing as we move forward in the future. So with that, hearing no further discussion, we have the motion on the floor. With that, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on, item 6F, consideration of 2023 budget items. Administrator Chansky. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So with the adoption of this budget for 2023, we are asking the council to consider implementing some things. Um, this would be effective January 1, um, but authorizing us to move forward with a couple of items so we can hit the ground running on January 1. <coughs> Again, the reason we're asking this is because some of these items, um, the first three specifically, are items that we really want hit to hit the ground running in 2023 because they do have future financial impacts to the city. 
and we want to be sure that we have the numbers. Again, these are studies that tell us what needs to be done and how much these things could cost so the city council has the information they need to be making those financial decisions for the future. And we want to make sure that they have that early on in the year so they have time to discuss it. They have time to plan before, before we get in, you know, back into July again and we're back into budget process for 2024. We want to have those, 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 that information at hand. Um, so what we are looking for, and we are recommending um, make individual motions on each item. The first item is we are requesting that the council accept the attached proposal from Woodseth to conduct a facility assessment on City Hall. Again, this is an item that is in the budget that you just adopted. Again, we're asking you to approve this uh, assessment. It would begin January 1. Now it just gives us the time to get through all the, con we have to get contracts signed and such, um, and so, and give Woodseth the heads up so they can get going right away on January 1st. Um, that's the first item. With Woodseth, again, we are recommending it be Woodseth. They did our, 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 um, our community center study, and they allows them to just kind of build right back up um, on, onto that by doing looking at City Hall. Uh, the second item, and I'll just go, uh, Mr. Mayor, should I ask, do you want to go one by one and then have discussion, or do you want me to present all four before you discuss? Why don't you present all four, and then if we have questions, we can okay. go through it. Is the council good with that mm -hmm. presentation, okay. all four? It's, yeah. The go second item is the, is the staff is requesting the council accept the attached proposal from Woodseth to conduct the sewer expansion study. Again, we're recommending Woodseth. They've done all our sewer stuff. So far, they have all our existing information on the sewer. They recently did an expansion um, and study of the NISWA plant, which is very similar to ours. Joe even had the opportunity to go with uh, Joe Dubel, the city engineer, and, and tour that plant. Um, and so we're very confident in, in Woodseth's ability to do our expansion study here as well. Uh, the third would be request the council accept the attached proposal from WSB for engineering and design services for the Bushman Road project. So we did, consult, we did create a full RFP for that. You approved us doing that back in the beginning of October. Uh, we issued that RFP, we got five responses from that. The road committee reviewed all five responses, they scored those responses, and really they looked at all five and they felt like WSB had the best proposal. They felt WSB's proposal, as well as staff has reviewed that proposal, really um, understood, presented best what we were looking for um, in design and engineer process. Um, they, we were actually very impressed in how they even took the study, the RFP we had and the steps that we had in that, and even said we think there's a more efficient way to do this and created, actually proposed a different process. Um, and for all, all intents and purposes, they felt like WSB, they were the right firm for the Pushman Road project. So this is engineering and design. That would be the element that we'd be doing in 2023. <coughs> There's a third element of engine of construction services. That would be 2024, should the council decide to continue and actually do construction in 2024. The last item, again, we talked about is the seventh police officer. Uh, back in, I believe it was November, or in October, it was October, uh, you approved the hiring of, of um, a part-time police officer, I don't know, I didn't even put the name in here, of Kyle Rustad to our, our part-time officer. Uh, forgive me, I was dealing with COVID when I did this memo. Um, as our part-time officer, and at that time we did tell the council our intention was should the council adopt the seventh officer would be to hire um, Kyle as our seventh officer. <coughs> also in the approved MOU with LELS uh, 359 is the creation of a new um, patrol officer EMT position. So we we're recommending that Kyle become our first patrol officer EMT. We recommended that he be stepped on, he started actually step B, I, I apologize. I put A, we meant B, we talked about it when we talked about it with the personnel committee that we'd start Kyle at step B of the P2 wage scale, um, which if I were to go back to the memo and I'll just give you since we listed that uh, MOU, Step B of the P2 wage scale for 2023 is 3013 an hour. So we were recommending of hiring Kyle Rustad or promoting him from part-time officer to officer EMT effective January 
first. So this gives us the time. Um, he's still actually even going right now through his, his, um, his training. So we'll continue in his training and get all the paperwork and such we need for Kyle to make him a full-time officer uh, effective January 1st. So those are the things that we are requesting the council approve. All, again, effective January 1st, but it gives us the direction to start moving forward and getting all contracts signed and working on the paperwork with Kyle for that promotion. Thank you, Administrator Chansky, for your presentation. And to clarify, because I heard you say this several times, and I don't know if people understand it, this is part of the 2023 budget. These are items that mm -hmm. were, uh, just, were approved just approved in the 2023 yeah. budget, yes. yes. Yep. And again, the point is, is so we can, especially with these first three, hit the ground running in 20, yep. January 1st, get the numbers we need so the council can make those informed decisions as what to do into the future. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. So does anybody... I'm going to take them one at a time. So I'm just going to start off with a Woodseth proposal to conduct a facility assessment on the city hall. Does the council have any questions or comments to Administrator Chansky on that? It's pretty straightforward. We know already why we need to have it done. Uh, Administrator Chansky came to us here a couple months back telling us what's in need of this place and it needs a lot of work. Refresh my memory. When was it built? Uh, 1994. 1995. And, and interestingly, in my, my research preparing for that, I actually came upon an RFP that the city put out in 2008 asking for this very same thing, which at the time the council chose to do nothing. So actually, 13 <laughs> years after this building, was, they was the city was already looking at doing something, chose not to, and now we're 14 years later. It's 27 years, no major improvements done in the building, no major upkeeps, potentially, right? Roughly. Pretty much all original, what it was original right. built. Yeah. Any questions from the council? If not, do I have a motion to approve uh, the acceptance of the proposal from Wide Seth uh, to conduct a facility assessment on City Hall? So moved. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Lil High. I have a second from Council Member Maroney. Any further discussion or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, motion carries. Item two, uh, attached, uh, except look at the proposal from Wideseth, uh, accept proposal from Wideseth to conduct a sewer expansion study. Again, we've had a lot of information brought forward to this council why this needs to happen. We know that our capacity is increasing. It's getting bigger every year, and we also know that once it reaches that 80 percent tile, I believe I'm correct on that, correct, Joe, right? we have to start looking at an expansion. We're not there yet, but we've, we, you heard this council say, and you guys all look around, you know the city is growing, it's gonna to continue to grow. And also gives us a chance to take an opportunity to look at, okay, do we expand sewer beyond where it currently is? And so that's another part of this study as well, uh, as a part of that. So uh, do I have any comments or questions? Again, we're in a good position that we're not being forced to have to do it. I agree. We're being proactive on this. Yes. I was just exact, going to say exactly the same thing. It's you know, Right now we're planning ahead for 10 years down the road, and let's start looking, making plans for making that expansion because we know we're going to have to do it as long as the city is growing, and the city is growing. We grow a little bit every year, and we have to... It's, it's just like playing SimCity, you know, the old computer game. You need to start putting money ahead and start building out the infrastructure. Michael's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, that was before his time. <laughs> <laughs> and it, but you have to start putting money ahead to build that infrastructure to plan for the additional, the additional homes and the families that are going to be living here, as well as if we want to expand, you know, some of our com commercial base, you know, things that are going to need intensive, you yep. know, stuff. I agree. I agree. So in other words, what you're saying is we shouldn't kick the can down the road. Don't the kick the can down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Not a one. All right. Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve uh, uh, the Woodseth proposal <laughs> to do sewer expansion study? So moved. I have a uh, motion from Councilmember Lilla. I do have a second. Second. Second from Council Member Maroney. Any, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Aye. What's that? What? 
Uh, item three, staff requests that the city council accept the attached proposal from WSB for engineering and design services from Bushman Road Project. I just have a couple comments about it. Uh, it is broken down into two phases, as you stated, three phases, but basically two phases are up for 2023, and that's the largest part of it, with the smaller piece being the actual construction phase, if the council at that time determines to move forward with construction in 2024. Correct. Which completing these phases this year, they will be able to do that if they so choose in 2020. Correct. Okay. The, the completion of phase, phase two culminates with going out for bid for construction services, hopefully in the October era. So, you know, we're gonna spend the first half of the year doing yep. the actual design, getting some numbers in, having something for the council to look at, and if the council continues to choose move forward, we should be able to go out for bid by the end of the year. Okay. <clears throat> Any, any, anybody have any additional questions for Administrator Chansky on the proposal? No? Nope. Okay. Hearing none, do I have a motion to accept the proposal from WSB to do the engineering and design services for the Bushman Road project? So moved. I have a motion from Council Member Ball. Second. Do, I have a second from Council Member Bakken. Is there further discussion on this? No, I, I would both Michael and I reviewed the uh, the proposals and uh, it's it's what's needed and uh, <laughs> this basically does the engineering so that we can actually start construction in 2024 it's very it's it's obviously needed you know, so. absolutely and mr. mayor can I add, if I can add something to this also Chansky, just just for do. public information again part of this process this is really is the engineering so the council the road committee already mentioned in previous council meetings looking at a, a um, local standard. Again, that'll be back to the next council um, to also help guide that process. Um, in that process, we do have um, some public input as well. Yes. So as we get to design, and we actually have designed some, some different corridors for the, for the community to look at, we will be doing public comments. So there will be time opportunities for the public to comment on the design before the council chooses to do anything. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that, adding that. And that's, I agree with that 100%. And yes, there will be opportunities for the public to weigh in on it, so. Any other discussion from the council? Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Last item on the list, staff, uh, the request to approve the promotion of our part-time police officer to full-time patrol officer EMT at step B of the P2 wage, which is 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. 30. So moved, Mr. Mayor. I have a motion second. from Council Member Bach, and I have a second from was it Council Member a little higher, Maroney. No, he, Maroney. Maroney? Yep. Maroney. Is there any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion approved. Congratulations to Kyle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, moving him up. So, great. All right. Before we move on, Mr. Mayor, we did have the consent agenda yep. item A pulled Yes. Up. Yep. I was going to do that. So 6G. Six, six G is consent agenda item on the minutes from November. Yes. Councilmember Maroney. Quick correction on page two of the minutes uh, for the public hearing for those who are in speaking. Um, the last name, Jerry Schroden, uh, Scratch, Nervous and Management. He is from Breezy Point Timeshare. Right. Uh, nervous and Management. Okay. Administrator Chansky is taking that note right now. All right. Do I have a motion to approve the November date right the november uh, excuse me yeah november yeah, november meeting yep. yep yep uh, um council minute meetings as amended so moved second council member little high makes the motion council member ba uh, maroney <laughs> seconds it all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed abstentions and the motion carries all right Item seven, administrator updates. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the, I don't really have much of an update today. There's one thing that we would like to do today. 
um, before we kind of call this last meeting of the year to a close, is that there are three of you that will be departing us at the end of the year. Um, and we do want to thank you, staff, staff, we do want to thank you for your service to the city of Breezy Point. So Mayor Rogan Camp and Council Members Bakken and Lillehei, if you got to please join me up front, we do have some certificates of appreciation we do want to give you for your years of service to the city of Breezy Point. I have to cover up my jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Mom said, don't wear those. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And while we all know you, none of you will be truly leaving us as residents for a city. I mean, hope to still continue to see you around and see you participating in our community. We just want to again thank you for, as you will be um, vacating your seats at the end of the year, we just wanted to thank you for your, your years of service to the city of Breezy Point. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And that, Mr. Mayor, is all that I have this evening. <laughs> that was, thank you very much. Uh, before we, uh, we move into our, uh, our closed uh, session, uh, I, do, I do just want to, I'm going to allow both the outgoing council members, if they have any last words they'd like to say. Council Member Little, hi. Oh, um, geez. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to. I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm just telling you you can if you want. I just it's like your to, opportunity. <laughs> I just like to thank the city for allowing me to uh, to serve. Uh, way back when we were setting the uh, um, setting the pay for city council members, and I just happened to make the comment that I do this job for nothing. And of course, that's what the paper picked up and they put in the you know. And I would. I've really enjoyed working on you know working for the city. Um, it's it's a it's a privilege to do this. I wish more people would be uh, willing to get involved. Being on the commissions, being on, uh, being just being out in the audience. It's it's wonderful to have a lot of people here to listen. Um, we had an, uh, you know some issues come up that had been discussed for years, <laughs> and when they started to come into fruition, people are going, I never heard about this. And this is, having you all here is such a plus to have you actually being involved and listening and understanding what we're doing up here. It's, I don't want to say it's a tough job, but it's a, it's a job that needs to have people to listen because what you're discussing is your futures. And I just want to, again, I just want to thank you so much for allowing me to be up here. Councilman Bakken, do you have anything? Well said. Yeah. It has been a privilege. <laughs> Look at that, <them> like that. <laughs> <laughs> been a real privilege. There's some great, everybody, there's some great, great, great people here, all dedicated to this city. I love it. It's going to be a little tough to leave. Dad, but you're not going away. No, you're, you'll be there. Dad says, my father said, real men cry. <laughs> That's all right. But I will be out there. I've applied for a couple of boards, Cemetery One and Parks and Rec, I hope. But it's a great city, and I've watched it grow, and I'm so proud to serve you. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I didn't, ha I didn't uh, serve as long as the two gentlemen that just got done speaking, but I will say it's been a pleasure and an honor to serve the citizens of Breezy Point, um, and I'm blessed to have the opportunity to be able to do it. I thank you for your trust in me when I was originally elected, um, and I know that as the council in 2023 moves forward, they're going to have challenges in front of them, and I just encourage them to think about the city as a whole, all the citizens that live here. Uh, and that 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 are here because it really is about everybody and I do echo what Tom said It's great to see the people in the crowd I'm happy to see people sitting in those chairs because when I first came on as mayor it was empty There was nobody that would come to these meetings So I encourage all of you to stay engaged come to the meetings talk to your neighbors tell them come listen 
because that's how you're informed and you know what's going on in the best fashion and form. And it really doesn't take a whole lot out of your day to come sit for an hour, hour and a half, uh, most times to listen to what's going on and share it with the people around you. Communicate with your neighbors. Tell them, hey, did you hear about what's going on? Because that's their ability to come in and be a part of the process too. Whether it be an open forum, whether it be public hearings, whether it be just sitting here listening. Because that's what makes the city strong. And things don't always go our way. And I say our because I'm a citizen of the city as well. And so there are things that are going to come and go after I'm not the mayor anymore. Then I'm going to go, what the heck? But it, find out what's going on, learn, be educated. And then if you have something to say about it, be heard. There's a lot of opportunities to do that. So again, thank you. And I, I thank you for allowing me to be here. It's been a pleasure, it's been a pleasure to work with all of you on this council. Uh, we've, we've done a lot of great work, and there's a lot of work left to be done for Councilmember Maroney, Councilmember Wall, and the others coming forward. Um, so good luck to all of you, and I, I appreciate that. So with that, I am going to call for, uh, to adjourn to closed session pursuant to Minnesota Statute 13D.01 to conduct the city administrator's six-month performance review. So with that, thank you.